G'day guys, how are you going? So today I thought I might pop down to one of my favourite places in Victoria. Down here at Fort Nepean, right on the heads of Port Phillip Bay. So this is uh, actually a, an old military site. So these days it's all open for the public to come down and have a look. But I thought, uh, yeah, I've probably been here about three or four times before, but I absolutely love it having a look at the old stuff and a bit of the history. So I thought while I'm here, might have a bit of a wander around, get a bit of footage try and share a little bit of history if I remember it correctly and uh, pass it on to you guys. So sit back and let's have a look sees, eh? interesting piece of weaponry right here. It's known as the disappearing gun. So what it did, you'd load it up, and it'd be hidden here underneath all the scrub and that type of stuff. It would pop up up the top, shoot, and then drop back down below to get reloaded. Effectively disappearing and uh, making it very difficult for aircraft to see where the firing's coming from. So there you go. So here's a little bit of interesting history for you. So these guns we see behind us here actually fired the first shots of World War I and the first Australian shot in World War II. So when Britain declared war on Germany the following day, this gun here actually fired a shot across the bow of a uh, German steamer trying to get out of Port Phillip Bay, which made it the first shot fired in World War I. So the other one there, that actually shot the, the uh, first Australian shot of World War II. Same scenario, um, a steamer, I believe, trying to get in to Port Phillip Bay without signalling. So there you go. History right there. Woo! <laughs> it's a bit daunting, isn't it? They're a lot shorter back then, it looks like, too. <laughs> Track down to the beach. Oh, here we go. So behind me here is the engine house. So where you see those uh, bits of concrete there, they actually had big steam turbine engines on them that uh, created the power that ran all the lighting and everything else that is on this site. There's not much left there today, um, but you can sort of see in that picture over the back, sort of what it looked like. That's about it here.
So behind me here, we've got the old hospital and quarantine buildings. So you can imagine in the late 1800s and early 1900s, right through to World War II, that uh, this is not probably one of the greatest places you could be. It's pretty isolated, you're away from everything and uh, no communication. Soldiers were the majority of people that came down here with influenza, also uh, the Spanish flu was pretty massive, and as well as smallpox. So pretty well if you got down here, your life wasn't going to be that great, or it already wasn't if you were in quarantine. And welcome to the quarantine disinfecting chambers. Have a look at those, eh? Hey? really got a bit of history about it. So effectively, what they did here, there was two processes. One was using gas to kill any, you know, bugs and that type of stuff that might have got into people's luggage. Um, so pretty well went in one of these. They gassed it for about half an hour or so and let it out. The other one was a steam process. So same thing, they wheeled them up into the chamber there and they killed everything with hot steam. So. There you go. Originally how quarantine and that type of stuff worked here in Australia, down on Point Nepean. Very interesting, isn't it? And here's the bit that I love. The boiler to create the steam. So for those of you that don't know how steam is created, you've got your firebox here, which you build up a whole heap of heat. This is your boiler in here. So what happens is the heat will generate, get stuck in here, you shut these doors, and that'll force the heat to go up through these sort of um, pipes that go in there to, to heat up the water a little bit better. Effectively, it then boils, creates steam that'll uh, gather in a, probably not gonna see it there, but it'll gather into a spot at the top and then you pump that to where you want it. No. Pretty simple how these things work. It would be the same thing if it was used for a uh, locomotive or something too. That steam would end up then to push a piston to move a train. But there you go, there's the applications of a, a steam engine used for so many different purposes for hundreds of years and still is too. she wrote so thanks for joining me guys for that short little walk through Fort Nepean and let me tell you that's only about half the stuff that they've got here to have a look at so if you're down here in the Portsea area just head a little bit more south and check out a place that has so much history it's fantastic anyway guys cheers for that we'll catch you later